Think about the last time you took a phone call. If it's longer than exchanging a few words or you start talking about something you have to think hard about, as if by magic, you'll get up and pace. Walking and talking seem to go hand in hand. I think um, I've spoken a lot about uh, my personal experience with walking in my other videos. So this video is gonna be a little bit hijacked by the incredible, amazing benefits that I keep on discovering with all the scientific research on something that's so underrated like walking. But I did obviously do the challenge. It was me doing over 20,000 steps on average per day for over four weeks. So it was for the whole month of August and then some. And I found that it was a really nice challenge to do and to be honest for me personally it didn't really feel like a challenge because we've had such great weather where I am in that um, I've wanted to be outside, I've wanted to walk and I've wanted to increase my steps and a lot of the social activities and um, even a lot of the arbitrary things and and doing little errands and stuff have involved a lot of walking or I've at least incorporated walking in them because I either wanted to be outside in nature, beautiful garden and and therefore, you know, uh, as a byproduct, I've improved my walking and um, I've added my steps. Now, whether I can do this when the weather changes and maybe I don't feel mentally as, as happy and motivated to go for walking is gonna be a different thing. And I think anything above 20,000 steps is probably um, gonna be taking almost too much time. And then just quickly with regards to personal stats, I don't really monitor my weight, but I was a bit curious. Uh, my weight has roughly stayed the same, if anything has increased a little bit, um, which is really funny. And that just goes to show you, even doing 20,000 plus steps a day, doing my resistance training and being as active as I am, I eat so much that uh, I personally could never lose weight with just walking. But I know that it's been an unbelievable and an underestimated tool with regards to losing weight. So that's something that a lot of people have been championing just increasing their steps um, has helped them on their weight loss journey. Another reason it was probably very doable for me is um, if you've seen my previous videos I do have quite a high step count anyway because I live quite an active lifestyle and I'm always sort of um, pottering about because my NEAT is probably quite high which allows me to eat an insane amount of calories. I counted again recently and it is I am hitting 4,000 calories a day that's not an exaggeration. I may do a what I eat in a day but um, yeah it's just it's just insane. But either way, I love to walk, just for all of the reasons stated in all of my videos, but also uh, just because I can, and I love it, and I appreciate it. And I appreciate my, my little legs. And I appreciate that I'm not a mermaid that doesn't have any legs. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I know, I know, the red hat is really OTT. <laughs> but um, I put it on, and it was like the sorting hat in Harry Potter, and it reminded me to remind you guys to like and subscribe should have written it in the ribbon the uk has a massive heat wave at the moment and i'm here for it so i'm all about the colorful clothing <laughs> sometimes if you're already into fitness it may feel like walking is beneath you because it's almost too easy it's not considered exercise or even a movement because it's not particularly strenuous for you but actually it has some benefits for even the more athletic people so you can adapt more effectively to your training if you walk so if you almost use it like um, having active recovery days by walking and it helps you not only recover but decongest and actually improve your range of motion for your given sport or activity so on both ends of the spectrum we have very athletic people and we have people who are not very active and you need to walk to recover and get out of pain with both types of people, so anywhere in the spectrum. Um, and we can see this. There are various studies, like there's one where 7,000 people reduce their chances of getting chronic, so anything that is three months or above um, pain on their lower back, which is, I know, something that a lot of us have. I definitely entered my 30s and started getting more lower back pain. And it's very important to keep our spines moving to be healthy, and walking does this in a very low impact and fantastic way. A single walk can boost your creativity by up to 60%. 150 minutes of walking a week can prevent any mental health issues that may arise or at least decrease the chances of uh, mental health issues. You know, we're meant to walk outside. It calms our nervous system. The different colors, hence this colorful bikini. Taking walks in nature 
is very good for health. There's actually a term that was coined uh, by the Japanese called forest bathing. Again, it's one of these like special terms for something we've probably been doing for years and years in our existence, but walking in the forests or in the woods or anywhere in nature, or even in your uh, local park or garden, and taking in all the different colours. We've got a fig tree over there. That's a fig tree. It's been giving us loads of figs this summer. Uh, that's an apple tree that's not on its, on its last legs. But, you know, even taking all of these things in with nature can really help us feel more grounded and um, therefore be more creative. I'm aware of the irony of me filming this video while I'm sitting down, but I'm trying to like hold my laptop notebooks and talk to you. But believe me, before this, I was walking and I was rocking. <laughs> we all know now walking is a great low impact way to lose weight, increase our activity levels and burning calories. It, you know, it ultimately alters our body composition and strengthens our feet, including our ankles, hips and our connection to the ground. And bonus points if you can do this barefoot. So we can increase all these things by twofold, just walking barefoot and doing something what we that is now termed as grounding. Again, there are all these kind of names that the fitness wellness space has coined for things that we've been doing for millions of years, but grounding so you can feel the grass. Look how beautiful that grass is. I've been walking barefoot. I'm not gonna show you how dirty my feet are right now, but <laughs> I've been walking barefoot on the ground and um, it doesn't have to be grass, but anywhere where it's safe to walk um, barefoot. We are bipedal creatures after all, we walk to explore our environment. I'm actually finding it difficult to deliver the research in a way where I'm not just reading from my laptop and speaking in a coherent and articulate manner. So I'm actually, I've got up and I'm actually pacing myself. So I'm, I'm practicing what I preach. I'm gonna put these glasses on. Um, but I want to tell you about a really good study done in the 1950s in London with bus conductors. So these guys don't exist anymore, but the ones that used to um, walk all around the bus to check your tickets. I guess it still happens on trains and bus drivers. There was an insane difference. <laughs> Sorry, that's not really a scientific term. Uh, there was a very significant difference with the amount of bus drivers who had heart diseases and, um, and died from their heart disease compared to the conductors. And, you know, they were working the same hours, they were doing similar shifts, they were in the same um, vehicle, but obviously one of the greatest variables was the conductors were active, and as in they were pacing up and down the buses and the uh, bus drivers spent a very long time being sedentary. I mean, here's another benefit just with regards to your immune system. So they found that uh, office workers that walked 30 to 45 minutes a day compared to the workers that didn't walk this much had 43% less sick days than the other workers in the control group. I mean, it's just mind blowing. <laughs> Prevents heart disease, improves lung function, uh, helps regulate blood pressure, the list goes on. We need to wake up and smell the roses. Writers such as Nisha used to go for long walks in the Swiss Alps and he actually famously said that he didn't trust an idea he came up with if it wasn't an idea he came up with when he was walking. <laughs> As we get older, brain grey matter shrinks, especially the hippocampus, and walking can offset this, which is why they believe increased walking can help with your memory and reduce risk of degenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's. That just adding 25 minutes a day of walking can increase your lifespan by up to seven years. Perhaps it's just upping our steps can help all of us, whether you're a top Olympic athlete or a self-identified couch potato, walking is going to help you. This is almost as if we're living in a world now where everyone wants a prescription, whether it be a medicinal prescription or a natural protocol. Even with walking, they want a prescription with how many steps they should take. And actually, we've just stopped enjoying things for the sake of it. Why don't we just go for walks, not because it's going to help us be productive or not even because of these endless um, amount of benefits I keep finding in research papers. How about just go for walking? because you can because it's a human privilege if you if you're if you have legs that enable you to walk and I'm grateful every day or at least I try to be is it any wonder then that walking can help conflict resolution we can even probably reflect on our own lives how sometimes if we've been very angry or had very strong feelings about something and been thinking irrationally going for a walk has really helped us put things into perspective. We can connect better as humans if we're not just staring each other in the face and it helps us listen and process better. Sometimes the act of walking beside each other where we're not looking at each other in the eye in some ways makes the connection deeper because we're looking out into the distance. And if you think about it from an evolutionary perspective, this makes sense that we've evolved this way. You know, we had to look out for predators such as lions. And like I've said um, earlier in the video, we walk 
doing other things. You know, we can walk and talk, we can walk and lift heavy weights, we can walk and move our body. Looking at someone can sometimes be confrontational, especially if you're having a, a difficult discussion. In essence, it's putting yourself in the best position and the best mental state to resolve any issues or problems you may have with the person walking beside you. People will sink their steps, so regardless of your height and how long your legs are, people will sink their steps to the person they're walking beside. First thing in the morning, bodies are stiff from sleeping, we get up, we rehydrate with water, hopefully, and then we should hit the pavement and go for a walk. So. Not only does this get sunshine into our eyes, which is something that uh, Dr. Huberman's been talking about <laughs> since he started his podcast, but we also get a nice dose of vitamin D. The sunlight in our eyes can help regulate our circadian rhythm. And I went into that in my previous video. Um, but you get the benefit from walking physically by pumping that lymphatic system and waking you up. Healthy blood sugar walking helps cut blood sugar spikes after eating. When we eat food, carbohydrate is broken to glucose um, and that raises our blood sugar and normally we get a big spike. Walking activates glucose receptors and those receptors like suck up that glucose and essentially if we start walking or doing some low form exercise after eating, we can help reduce that big spike that we get, which is really, really beneficial, especially if you're on the board of uh, type 2 diabetes, for example. But ideally, we should go for a little 15 minute walk after every meal, but that's not completely realistic for um, a lot of people and their lifestyles. And in this study, results were so, so significant that even 45 minutes of walking in the middle of the day compared to walking straight after a meal made less of a difference to that big spike that we spoke about earlier. It made a complete difference to walk those 15 minutes after consuming that high carbohydrate meal compared to walking in a big block of 45 minutes that wasn't straight after eating a meal with regards to improving uh, blood sugar responses. I try and think every day how grateful I am that I can walk, that I can use this body. That's why I started this channel, because I want to push myself and challenge myself. I'm just so grateful to have a, a fully functioning body with injuries now and again, but it's nothing compared to what other people go through. So yeah, if you've taken anything from this video, I hope that you will increase your steps and do it simply because you can. But if that's not motivation enough, then I hope the benefits I've stated can help you. Enjoy walking. See you later.